So plumbing can be an issue for people. And you know what? It was an issue for us when we first got married. And here's the main reason it was an issue for us. I married a Brit. And apparently in England, you can flush almost anything down your toilet. And I mean, almost anything, apparently. Because when we first got married, he would sometimes use paper towels to blow his nose mm -hmm. while he was sitting on the toilet. And then he would put them in the toilet and flush them down the toilet. Unbeknownst to me. What's wrong with that? <laughs> what's wrong with it is that American drains are not built for yeah, paper towels. Your sewers aren't as good as our sewers. Yeah, we're not going to talk about British sewers or <laughs> London sewers. That's a gross topic. But let's talk about the fact that as a result, what happened to us is it actually clogged up way down in our basement. And we ended it up did. with a big overflow in our basement. Early on in our marriage, like it wasn't, good. it was like what three three months into our marriage yeah. that this happened, mm -hmm. it was disgusting, and he was a little panicky because he didn't know anything about plumbing in the U.S. very much no. at that time. But boy, did you learn fast! I had to. Yeah, it's a good thing I already <laughs> owned a snake, isn't it? It is. Because when I bought this yeah. house, it was very old and in really terrible shape, and it had tenants in it who also didn't know how to take care of things. And so there were some blockages. So I had bought a snake when I first bought the house before you ever came along. And I had snaked out all the drains and everything was really good and everything was great. And then I got married to this Brit who flushes paper towels. <sighs> Not anymore. Not anymore, though. <laughs> Not anymore. And then another time, something must have happened. We have a, we had our drain in the basement. It was actually an open. It didn't have a grate over top of it. And don't know how this happened, but a rag somehow got into that drain yeah and clogged it up as well and the other clog that we've had is tree roots yeah and tree so roots. we'll talk about that later on as far as like what you can do for tree roots and the solution that we found that has worked beautifully for us we love it um yeah but yeah so russ do you flush paper towels anymore no no where do paper towels go now in the bin in the bin or in the garbage can <laughs> yes <laughs> Because he never wants to have a repeat of that horrible, horrible no, mess. That was horrible. Yes. And thankfully, I already knew how to do some of that stuff. And I will say, some credit to, I'm going to give some credit to myself on this. I'm going to pat myself on the back. Were you not impressed that you had married a woman who was able to um, get down and take care of some of that? Get down and dirty. Yeah. yeah. That was a time when you were really <laughs> happy for my grit. There was another thing I had, though, in my basement that made it a lot better. I had bought some pallets made out of plastic, not the wooden kind. Yeah. We have some plastic pallets because we do get some water in our basement. Our basement was not meant to be dry, so we do get water occasionally. And so I had bought plastic pallets. Yeah. That was a lifesaver in that case because was. I was able to put a plastic pallet down, which rose above the level of everything that was there, and lay on top of that and really... Yeah, get so down in there laying in yeah so yeah. my body wasn't having to lay in it i was like above it like on my little own little boat but not floating mm -hmm. just static yeah <laughs> but clean and above but yeah that was a pretty gross experience because i was lost because the it filled up so i didn't even know which way the pipe work went right but so. because i had snaked it out when i first bought the house i did know and yeah. so I got right in there and so got Kimberly to work. Kimberly was able to save the day. Yay. But now he knows how to do it. So guess who gets mm. to do it if it happens again? <laughs> yeah, and we have had a couple now. We have had a couple of occasions where the drain has overflowed because we like I said, we have an older house and we have some issues, so we yep. have to keep on that on top of that maintenance. We do. And we haven't had a problem recently, which is good. Yeah. But we have had problems throughout the years just off and on. We just have to keep an eye on it and maintain it. So Yep. Absolutely. So yeah. Now, I know, Russ, there's probably this topic. There's probably all sorts of jokes that you feel like saying. Yeah, a few. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I already know you. <laughs> so you're going to try and restrain yourself. We're going to take we're going to stay to the topic as I'm best we can. Keep serious. Yeah, as best you can. <laughs> yeah, because that's not going to happen. So today, though, we are talking about plumbing and the plumbing that has to do with your house. And there's all sorts of different plumbing jokes. There's all sorts of different jokes about plumbers in general. And uh, yeah, we're going to try and leave that all aside today. But we're going to talk about what are the different types of plumbing? What are they used for? What should you expect when you're looking at a house? 
Or if you're looking at your house or you're looking to hire a plumber, if they say something, you want to make sure yeah. that, you know, you're checking them for accuracy. Do you know what type of pipes you have, for instance? Yeah, exactly. So let's get into it. Yeah. So let's first of all talk about there's like about five or six different types of plumbing pipes based on when you look on the Internet of how you want to divide them up. But let's talk about like the oldest form of pipes. So the oldest form of pipes are galvanized pipes yep. or lead pipes. Yep. I mean, lead was actually used first, but very quickly they moved to using galvanized piping. And galvanized piping is not terrible, but there's a problem with it. Over time, there's a problem with it. Well, yes. To be honest, all plumbing over time, there's a problem with it. But galvanized piping, especially over time, um, caused a lot of issues with corrosion. Yeah, they would corrode on the inside, and so you wouldn't necessarily see it, but it would also fur up with that corrosion. Yes. And so it would reduce the actual amount of water that could flow. Sure. So if you have an older house and you have low water or restricted water like we do in ours in places, like not yeah. all the rooms in our house have that because as things have broken, we've replaced it with a different type of plumbing. But uh -huh. we have quite a bit of galvanized piping in our house. Yeah. We have a lot or we had, we had. It's slowly getting replaced over time. And as we replace that we're getting better flow yes indeed so yeah. we're going from um you know the le the uh galvanized plumbing yep to plastic packs yeah and we'll talk about that in a minute yeah but we're but basically the other type of old old-fashioned type of plumbing is lead so here's the thing to know if you do have lead pipes as a supply line in your house in Racine. Number one, it is only dangerous to children un from the ages of like 12 or 13 or under. It's not dangerous for adults to have a small amount of lead. Now, you don't want to have it there. It should be removed. So don't think that I'm saying you shouldn't get it removed. But number two, there's grant money available from the city of Racine um, through federal grants that filter down to the state. Then they give it out yeah. to the cities. There is a limited amount each year that they are able to do. So you want to call up the city if you have that kind of a house and get on the list right away. And the city actually has a list of the houses that have it, but they don't make it a priority unless you ask to have it removed. So until you ask for it, until you request to have it removed, you don't go on the list to have it removed. We sold a house last year that had a lead supply line. The other option you have on a short-term basis, if you have concerns about it, is to put in a reverse osmosis system at the supply line or a filtration system of some kind that removes any lead contaminants and just put that in where it comes into your house and then rehook, like just put that between that and the line into your house yeah. and you're all set. So those until things can, the city can until the city can get around that, yeah. to doing yours. Yeah. yeah. Or to be honest, or as long as you want to wait. Mm -hmm. um, but those are the ways to do, take care of that. However, galvanized uh, steel pipes and lead pipes are no longer used. So if you do have a plumber tell you that lead pipes are no big deal and it doesn't matter. Well, that's not entirely true. No. Um, and if a plumber tries to tell you that galvanized pipe is just fine, because you can still get galvanized pipe because it is used in like... Um, uh, commercial construction sometimes galvanized yeah. is still used because it's replaced more frequently and it's less like liable to being damaged if it's correct. in a heavy traffic area correct so sometimes in commercial they still have it and there are some guys who will but do, you don't want it in your house because no. it will go bad over time it is absolutely 100 percent. it goes bad and it's expensive to put in um you have to have soldering you have to it's like it's a big mess now the second most common, the, so the most common thing you'll see in a house in Racine is galvanized pipes. Yes. The second most common thing you'll see in a house in Racine is copper pipes, which is the more modern version. That's what most of the houses yeah. from the early, from post-war, post-World War II, mm -hmm. most of the houses had copper piping in them. So they either have galvanized or they have copper pipes. And the problem with copper is that it goes soft when it's heated. So it has a tendency to sometimes get banged or like if it's not the right thickness it can bend so for example have you ever seen those copper supply lines for like um for like a kitchen like for mm -hmm. the for the refrigerator those are so thin they actually can bend yeah they're thinner like brake lines so yeah uh, they're, they're thin whereas a copper pipe for water flow 
for it other is, water flow. It is bigger than that. You can still bend them. You hit the half them inch. and you can bend it. Yep. Or you use compression fittings or solder fittings. Solder fittings, as we call yeah. them here in the States. So the solder, so with copper pipes, that is also, you've got a lot of old school guys out there who are still, who use copper and love copper. Um, they do require soldering. And so, and they are, but copper is very durable. Yep. Um, the only thing about copper that you want to be careful about is you do not want to connect copper to galvanized because when you connect yeah. copper to galvanized, it starts to decay rapidly. Both yeah, ends there, it has a reaction to the... There's uh, a chemical reaction between uh -huh. copper and galvanized um, that, that is a bad, bad yeah, thing. Yeah, you have to get special fittings that are neither to be able to join it up. Yep, so if you're going to join galvanized to copper, you actually end up getting like a PVC type fitting because you don't, it's a non-ferrous metal. It's yeah. not metal is what it is. It's non-ferrous uh -huh. and it's not metal. So it's like, um, which is a weird, it's a weird connection it's to go. It's a weird connection, yeah. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons why people either, if they have it replaced, they have all the galvanized replaced with copper or they don't join it together yeah. because... It, However, copper is expensive. So. Copper is expensive. The other yeah. thing is if your house is left vacant for a number of time, Copper piping is something that thieves actually people break into houses for because to get. it's more expensive. It's well because they can take the it thieves. because they can take it and take it to the scrap uh, to yard. the scrapyard yeah. and they will get money for copper. Mm -hmm. So it's more expensive to buy, but it is very durable. It lasts a really long time, yep. and you don't have the problems that you have with PVC and PEX, which are the other two we're going to talk about in a second here, um, with cracking and breaking and things of that nature. Yeah. So it's way more, it's definitely about twice the price of the others, but they don't crack and break nearly as often. No. But you do need a professional to put them in. That's the other thing. Well, you have to be really good at soldering. So you have to most, be good at soldering. You, yeah. Russ, Russ happens, he, he gave, pulled a funny face there because he knows how to solder and he can solder. So he doesn't consider oh, copper. Oh, so how to use the compression fittings and I've done correct. lots of plumbing in the UK. Because with copper. this is quite common, the copper pipe. Yeah, but the reason he screwed up his face when I said that you have to use a professional is because the average person in America does not know how to solder copper pipes together properly or how to use the compression fittings necessary for copper pipes. Yeah. So um, that's why most people should hire a professional for that mm -hmm. particular job. However, the next type of piping that we're going to talk about is PEX. And this one is really easy for the do I DIYer. The do I wire. The do it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> the do so it yourselfers. For a DIYer, it's easy to use. You don't need so many fittings because it's flexible. Yes. So you can make those turns if you've got a wide sweep. So you're not gonna have a sharp ninety degree turn. Right without a fitting right but you can do a curve and get the same effect without the fitting which in actual fact is better in ways because less joins less leaks yes so the the less the less joins you have the less leaks you have what i always find really amusing is when somebody diys pecs and we've seen this in homes uh -huh. they will diy pecs and then they will get pvc 90 degree angles for no reason whatsoever Yes. Like there's plenty of room for them to do a, a single piece and do uh -huh. a curve, but they go ahead and they get the, because people are so used to having that 90 degree angle in copper or galvanized, uh -huh. they think it's necessary. It's different if you want to keep it tidy. So like you're going, it's coming up into your bathroom and you need a 90 to get to a faucet. Right. Then fine. But if it's in your basement where you're running it from the main supply over to an area where you can then take it upstairs, you don't need it. Well, and even when you say, you know, where you have to do it, there are very few ways that you have to do it because most of the bathroom piping that's coming up to a sink is coming up from the floor and is going straight up to a faucet. Yeah. So, I mean, you can run a second line. If you have two faucets, you can run two lines. Oh, and yeah. you will get better pressure if you do that. Definitely. So the, the other thing about it is that every time you put a join in, not only do you risk the chance of a leak because every join could be mm -hmm. a leak in the future, but also every time you put a join in, you actually reduce pressure a little bit 
because joins are not as big as the pipes themselves because they in a in pecs they have anyway a restriction there the either well because in pecs they go in pecs they yeah. go inside the pipe so it naturally yeah. has to restrict it down just because it's a slightly smaller in order to go inside the pipe so it restricts it down which restricts the flow whereas if you don't have the joins you get a really solid flow and if you have a manifold, which is really the best way to do pecs, is to hook it up to a manifold, you can have an amazing and incredible pressure in your house. Yeah, so you can have the main going into a manifold and then the manifold feeding off to everything yeah. else. So everything um, else has its own dedicated line yeah. to it. And that's something that we're moving our house to slowly as we go. We have purchased a manifold, but we've not put it in yet because we haven't made that last jump. We've still got quite a few pieces in our house that haven't yeah. failed yet mm -hmm. and haven't needed to be repaired. So, um, and in Racine, you have to get a permit. If you, if in the city of Racine, if you are a homeowner, you can do work on your own home, home that you own without a permit. If it's a repair, and not like an yeah. upgrade mm -hmm. so you can't add something in but if you already have it there you can repair it yourself So if you're changing the pipe work from you know uh to your toilet or to your to your sink in your yes. bathroom you can because yes. it's already there yes but you can't add another additional appliance yeah. so to speak or another sink or another this but um in so in receipt so because of that and because you and i know enough about plumbing and mm -hmm. piping um now we don't do our drain pipes too much no we don't really like doing and we've never done the main stack and we know that needs to be done in our house eventually um because ours is old cast iron we'll talk about that in a minute as well mm -hmm. but um but yeah, so pecs, we really love pecs. The other type that a lot of people use, and this is where you would use elbows and stuff, and you don't get as much restriction on this, is PVC. Yeah. And the reason that you don't get restriction on PVC when you have a join is because the joins on PVC go outside your pipe size. Yes. So they go on the outside. So a join on PVC does not restrict the water flow. Unless you're putting in a stop. Yes. In which case, obviously, it's the same type of stop as anything else. It's yes. a ball that rotates that shuts it off. Yeah, but you don't have a whole lot of those except for no. you will have one. But you have those in pecs anyway because yeah. you have those right before you get to every appliance or you mm -hmm. should. And you should have it at the beginning as well. You should have a shut off. Yeah, so you a can shut, what we call a shut that. off valve yeah. at the beginning of the line. And you should have one at the end of the line so that anywhere along that line, you can shut it off if you need mm -hmm. to. And that applies to any kind of Which piping. is great if you want to add sink in. Yes. You can shut it off at that point, cut it, put a yep. new join in. Yes. And PVC does lend itself towards joining much better than PEX does. And it and it allows you to do those 90 degrees and keep things looking a little bit neater in your basement, if that's what really important to you. Yeah, the only thing, the downside with, I see with PVC, because it is a stronger material. Yep. However... They only do, do so many different angles. Yes. So if you needed something like 55 degrees as opposed to a 45 or a 90. Right. Would then, yeah, you might have to. Do a number of angles. Do a in number there. of angles yeah. to get that. Yeah, and the more, again, the more joins you have, the more leaks you have a possibility of. Yeah. But the nice thing about PVC as a DIY, from a DIY perspective, and you can, PVC can be done DIY, is that it is just glue that yeah. holds it together. So mm -hmm. most of the joins for PVC are glue. And you start off with like a purple glue, and like a prep, like a prep color rather, and then you put That's like just a glue. just a degreaser that takes off any, yep. any, um, any residual and it's usually purple um, or blue or a, a dark color and yeah. the reason they do that is just so that you know whether you've done it or not is pretty yes. much the reason um so it's just like a, a degreaser but you want to do that first then you put on the glue and then you put it into the joint but then you also have to make sure you don't turn the water on right away you got to let that joint you cure. let it set Got to mm -hmm. let it set up. You got to let it cure. So, I mean, PVC is great. Um, PEX is great. It's my favorite because I like PEX personally. Um, but galvanized, of course, shouldn't be really be using that. Copper, the main reason I don't like it is because I can't do it myself. And it's expensive. And I prefer PEX because I can easily do that myself. 
Um, but let's talk about the other side of plumbing because one side of plumbing that we already talked about is the supply lines, yeah. bringing water in. But now let's talk about the other kind of supply line, so to speak, but the taking water out or the, the taking drainage. drain. It's because it's not always water because your yeah. toilet's not all water. Um, <laughs> nor, by the way, is most people's kitchen sink. Because the uh, kitchen sink, when you have a, especially for anybody like ourselves who has an incinerator or a garbage disposal of another brand, if you have a garbage disposal, it's not just water going down that tube. No. So you have it to keep that clean. Food stuff. Yeah, even though it's uh, ground up very fine and meant to go down into the uh -huh. into the pipes, you still got to think about that. You got to think about yeah, your pipe any, size. Anywhere it can get caught on on the way down. Yep is a potential blockage right so again that's where we're going to talk about there's a lot of different types again what you see there primarily um and we really don't see lead anymore in any of those supply lines because no. those have been replaced enough but we do see cast iron very common that's what we have in our house mm -hmm. primarily and you then also see pvc yeah because the one thing about pex is that pex does not have a drainage line no. They don't have a size that is drainage size. So, for example, your main stack in your house, or your main drain that goes into the municipal sewer, is probably going to be a four inch. So, it's going to be a good size tube. That's what handles things like from your toilet and things uh -huh. of that nature where things are a little bit larger that have to pass through the... So, you have a little bit larger pipe. Well, those four inch, that's really important. But the other thing is with PVC, you have to be careful. You still don't want to have a ton of joints. No. And the main reason is because every joint, like you said a minute ago, you kind of alluded to it. When food stuff goes down in it, it little bits can get caught at those joints. Yeah. And even though it's not restricted flow, stuff can still get caught, can still build up. Yeah. And you need to flush it occasionally. Mm -hmm. And you have to be careful because in PVC pipes, you cannot use products like Drano because they're not made for the plastic. They actually will eat away at the plastic. I mean, you can use it, but just be just be aware that you're going to have to replace your PVC sooner yeah. if you're going to use it because of that, which is why I think it's a really good investment for every family to have a snake. Yeah. And obviously... And not a boa constrictor. Or a python, no. But you should... Every single family should have at least small or even a very large snake in their house to snake drains because 90% of the problems with drains and is is blockages and it's actually a really simple thing to do yeah sometimes it's even down to tree roots that have grown yes and broken into your pipes yes absolutely and that's the clay pipes that have to do with like when you're pulling out from drain tile and pushing mm -hmm. towards the municipal you will sometimes have clay and that is the underneath and those clay pipes can sometimes get damaged they sometimes get cracked especially in the winters you know you get a cold frost and, the and tree roots in there and tree roots pushing up against them and well pushing it into them because yeah. clay is a natural substance yeah. trees do grow into clay that's in the ground uh -huh. so trees don't see clay as something to grow around whereas cast iron they do see that as something to grow around and not try to get through yeah so there are definitely things you need to be aware of so with your drainage pipe some of the good maintenance is rather than have drano have a snake Snakes are much better to get out clogs and things like that. Um, yeah. Learn how to take off a toilet because there are so many things that kids flush down toilets and it gets caught like just after or just before the bend in the toilet. And so often if you know how to take off your toilet from the floor, you can actually save yourself hundreds of dollars. It's a really good you thing can. to learn. It's not a good job, but it's a job that sometimes needs to be done and it's so much so much if you have children especially who are likely to flush things down drains because that's what kids do same way you you bend on your sink you yep. should know how to un undo that yep and there's loads that of youtube is videos removable. yeah so it's there to trap water it's called a trap yep and it's there to trap water so gases from the wastewater can't come back up. Yep. But so you've got it's your U joints. to remove that U joint. So if anything goes down your plug hole, it may get caught in that trap. Yep. U bend. So by undoing it, you can remove it. Yep. Pour it up. 
and yep and retrieval. some houses it has it's called an s trap um or an s bend so yep. some of them have s bends u bends um there p are different traps. types p traps so the different traps in your house you should really know how to take care of those and there's hundreds mm -hmm. we're not going to do a video on that because there are hundreds of youtube yeah. videos out there just you know look for how to and say how do i and then put in exactly mm -hmm. what you need to do how do i remove my toilet and put it back in you know Things like that. And mm -hmm. like one of the products that we found recently that we really love is there is a newer product for toilets now where you don't have to use a wax ring when you reset yes. the toilet. And that is a game changer. Now, it doesn't last as long as a wax ring. But to be honest with you, I don't care. I'd rather have to change my toilet ring with this plasticky plunger looking thing than and, and have to do that every five to ten years than then worry about yeah. the wax ring because wax rings go bad over time as well. Oh yeah, and they are a disastrous mess to clean. They're horrible. Oh, to clean they're up like off. Hey, they had a really good function while they had it going, but now we have mm -hmm. a better product. It's a rubbery type thing. Yeah. Looks kind of like a Kong. I don't know if you guys know what a Kong looks like. It's a dog treat, not a dog treat, but it holds dog, dog treats as a dog yeah. toy, and it looks similar to a Kong as far as its shape. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And um, very useful, very flexible to flex to whatever size or position it is as well. So yeah. really, really great product. Just definitely want to look that up. Um, yeah, so we've talked about the different types. The other thing I'm going to do is in the description, I think we need to put in a link to our favorite products because we have a couple of products when it comes to this like we because of where we live in Racine we get tree roots and we have that product that I'm going to put a link down below yeah. in the description to that product that we use for to remove it um yeah it's a great product you just pour it into your toilet or it's like a crystal it's yeah. like crystals that you flush down your toilet and if you do that every year if you have a house that has that has problematic tree root problems, flush that down once a year. And what it does is it actually clings on to the roots that are there, the tiny little tendrils of them, and it literally rots them and dissolves them so that it goes yeah. away. It's great if you're going away for a few days. Yep. Do it just before you go. Yep. And that way it can sit there because it will follow the, the path and yep. stay where the roots are. And yep. then... It has a few days to do it. Or job. do it, or at the very least, do it right before you go to bed at night. Yeah. And that way, overnight, it gets to kind of cling and start to the work on the roof. The time you can give yep. it, yeah, is yep. better. Yeah, so. or if you're going to be gone all day or gone yeah. for 24 hours, even if it's just We've a, done it before if we're going away for, on a vacation for a yep. few days. Um, we'll do it just before we go. Yep. And it's great. Yep. And then there's Zep as well, which we really love as far as like a drain cleaner. It seems to work yep. really, really well. Uh -huh. So we're going to put a couple of our favorite products that we use for drains because we have an older house with older drains. And some of the things that we find really useful, we're going to put some links in the description for you guys if they're a help to you. If you already have them, that's fine. Yeah. So if you've ever had pr plumbing problems before, <laughs> why not... Drop us a line. Put a comment below. Tell us Let about, us know your stories. Tell us about the worst plumbing incident you had in your house. Was it from an, a pipe coming into your house? Like, you know, a pipe burst and all of a sudden there was water everywhere? Was it about a drain overflowing or bursting or, yeah, yeah. or a toilet just bleh. Whatever it was, drop a comment. Tell us about your worst plumbing issue ever. And we'd love to hear your stories as well. And if you want to know more, just um, also let us know. But otherwise, I think that's all we've got for today. Yeah. We'll put those products in the description below so that you guys can have access to them. You don't have to buy anything. We do make a little bit of a commission off of those products. But honestly, they are products we use and we yeah. love. We don't put anything in our in our stuff that is not what we love and use. And it's not and it's also where we buy it from, which in our case, these products we were only able to find on Amazon. And so that's where we've bought them from is because they weren't available in our local stores. So yeah. we'll put in some Amazon links for you guys. They are affiliate links, but trust me, we don't make a lot of money on them. And they are great products. They are a great product. And they don't product. cost you any more. They don't cost you any more. Mm. So, um, yeah, so it's a great product. So if that helps you, then click on one of the links below. And we'll see you next time here on Living in Racine. Bye for now. Bye for now.